Well, now you've had a couple days to process it. I mean, how, how do you, would you sum up your feelings on, on that game? You know, losing a close game like that, it's always heartbreaking because all summer, you know, we talked about coming out second game and proving the world wrong because, you know, not many people thought we were going to beat South Dakota State or even, you know, stay, stay in there with them. And uh, last year, uh, you know, a lot of people were, were saying, you know, the trenches weren't where they needed to be or we didn't compete into that level. So I feel like uh, second game, you know, we kind of showed what we, the improvement we made, but we got to keep doing that because, uh, you know, we ultimately didn't win the game, you know. What did so. you think was most improved from, from your standpoint and then the whole offensive line? Um, you know, this game, we came in with the mindset to be physical. I feel like we did that, you know, but uh, phys when you're physical, you also got to, you know, uh, lock in on your technique and lock in on your assignment because, you know, those two things go hand in hand. So, um, you know, I definitely think we brought the physicality to the aspect to the uh, game, but, you know, we definitely need to improve on the mental aspect. So. Were those some of your uh, only positives that you guys took the physical part, or is there any other, any other positives you take from that? Um, you know, the whole game, I don't think anybody gave up. I don't think anybody stopped believing. You know, it was a full four-quarter game. You know, it came down to the, you know, last play of the game. So, you know, I'm real proud of my team and the offensive line, how we battled the whole game. Didn't give up, but at the end in a close game like that, you know, we got to come out with the win. I guess how are you guys going to use it as fuel now for the rest of your regular season, just looking ahead of this Saturday, how are you guys getting your minds right? Right. So, uh, you know, Saturday we had a lot of missed opportunities. You know, we got to the goal line twice and had to settle for field goals. And, you know, scoring touchdowns there could have been a big turning point in our game. So, you know, we can't be content with, with anything. You know, we didn't win the game. We're not happy about that. So we just got to keep improving, you know, because if we want to end up in Frisco and winning that national championship, and to do that, you know, we got to keep getting better every day. You guys uh, work on anything today, or are you planning to work on anything about the false starts and trying to limit those going forward? Um, yeah, you know, we, uh, we're we working on our snap, our uh, new cadence, you know. it's uh, we got to make sure everybody's on the same page so when we ultimately get back to playing them, you know, we can be locked in on that snap count. Is, it, is the crowd noise a big part of that, or were there other... Oh um, no, it's it's 100 percent you know the crowd noise, but you know we're we're supposed to be prepared for that. You know, um, as an offense, we had you know eight false starts, and we can't do that if we want to be successful and win versus the number one team in the country. So we gotta improve on that. Um, and on Tommy, Tommy went down in the second half. Sean kind of taking over those last few drives. How do you think he kind of handled that extra uh, responsibility? You know, um, I feel like we kind of have two starting quarterbacks on our offense. So when one goes down, you know, um, it's expected for Sean to come in and and take care of the offense. I feel like he's a great leader. He took over what he needed to. We just couldn't couldn't pull it out at the end. So I was proud of the way he, he handled that. And then, you know, that SDSU defensive front is pretty, pretty quick. Even the linebackers, I guess, what was it like going up against that front? You know, that's, that's definitely the best front we played outside of the people we play in practice. So, you know, um, when you're playing a great team, everybody has to be on their A game. Everybody has to, you know what I'm saying, come with that intensity like they want to win and that physicality like I was saying earlier. But uh, yeah, you know, um, going against SDSU is definitely a challenge. They're the number one team in the country, so um, yeah. What kind of, I just what kind of went through your mind on that final play or the or the Cleveland, uh, you know, overturned touchdown? You know, I don't really like to get into that last play because a lot of things led up to that last play. You know, we shouldn't have to have to depend on a ref, you know, signaling that a touchdown or not signaling that a touchdown. Because like I said earlier, we had two opportunities on the goal line where we didn't score or we had false starts or do this and that. So we shouldn't have to be in that position. So when it when it comes, you know, we kind of we just kind of leave it in the ref's hands and leave it at that and get back to work. So. How much confidence does uh, this, I know you guys didn't do it, obviously, but it's got to give you guys some confidence moving forward for the rest of the season? You know, um, we were playing against the number one team in the country. We see where we're at and we see, like, you know, I feel like we kind of shot ourselves in the foot, you know. I don't think it was necessarily what they were doing, but the mistakes that we had on our own side that caused us to lose. You know, a team can't play against the number one team in the country and have eight false starts and expect to win. So, you know, we just got to clean up our act and focus on us. Um, I think if I were if looking at the Stetson roster, I think it was uh, Isaiah Ibarra. Yep, um, yep. Went to school with him. Yes, I did. Um, so, were you teammates for, for a little bit? Yep, there, yep. We we uh when I was a senior, he was a sophomore. So, you know, he was kind of a player I took under my wing, taught him a little bit, and um. It'll be excited to, exciting to play against a teammate finally. So. Yeah, have you texted him at all? So, uh, I haven't talked to him. I haven't talked to him yet, but uh, I imagine I will throughout this week. Yeah, what kind of a player or a person is he? That oh, 
he's a great person, you know, he's a hard worker. I haven't actually seen him in about over a year or so, but, uh, you know, what I remember, he was a hard worker. He put his team first and uh, can't wait to see him out here on Saturday. And just last one for me, but how do you feel like you've uh, grown and improved since, since last season? Um, you know, I can always get better. There's certain things I've honed in on, certain things I got better on. But, you know, that's not what my mind's set on. I'm focused on the mistakes I made. Like, I made quite, uh, quite a few mistakes this Saturday, and my main goal is trying to fix those. So, that's it. So, Raylan, I guess from your perspective, what were some of the biggest improvements you guys made on defense from, from last time? Um, from last time, I thought we were way more physical. We controlled the line of scrimmage a lot better this time. Um, in the, the back end, we were way more gap sound. Uh, weren't giving up explosives, and I guess when they did get an explosive, it was because we weren't in our gaps, but we were able to rally and tackle. So I thought we tackled a lot better, controlled the line of scrimmage, and controlled our gaps better than last time. What was it like to get your first, uh, first sack? It was pretty cool. Yeah, that was, that was, it was fun in that environment in a big-time game. Um, yeah, it was, it was a good feeling. That play, I mean, um, I think Granowski said you were in cover three. Uh, insert well, at least for a lot of those plays. I guess we'll, we'll take me through that play a little bit in the, in the call and just kind of how that um, how are you able to you know get a free on the free sack run on the sack. Oh. Yeah, uh, yeah. It was just a, a blitz we had schemed up for them that week, and they uh, they slid the protection the way we we were thinking they were or were gonna, and then uh, you know Seabass did his job and only took his guy, and then I just ended up coming free. So yeah, it was it was a good scheme and, and good call. Is that kind of based off of the last game? Just uh, something adjustment you made from the December game? Yeah, definitely. I mean, in December, we didn't get them in third down a ton in passing situations, and it was negative a million, too, so they weren't throwing the ball. Um, so this time, once we got them in, in, in a third down passing situation backed up, it was, it was a good call, good time. And when you said that on the explosive, you weren't in the, in the gaps or weren't gap sound, was that the, the first long pass on, the, on their touchdown drive? Is that the one you're referring to? Um, no, just more their runs. Oh, I mean, right. just like they, they just had a couple runs squirt out on us and I mean that'll happen when you play a good team and they, they got really good players up front too and so do we so there's some back and forth. But what are some of the, uh, the positives that you guys have taken from Saturday? Uh, I think you know our effort and how hard we played um, just the feeling after after this Saturday I would go to war with against anybody with this team with with the type of effort we gave and you know how, how together the team was the entire time there was no you know, bickering on the sideline about people not doing their job. It was just like, all right, let's do the next play, and we're going to play as hard as we can, fast as physical as we can. So I think that's the biggest thing. You've had a couple of days to process. Can you just take me through, you know, the emotions, that last touchdown getting overturned, um, what was going through your head? Yeah, um, I don't know. There's a lot of emotions going on. It's kind of a – I like to just control what I can control. And, you know, I thought CT and Sean made a great play, and it, it seemed to – seemed to work out for a second, but went up to the booth and it was out of our hands at that point. So, um, yeah, it was out of our hands, can't control it. But. How are you guys now um, getting your mind right for this Saturday, turning it around for Stetson? Uh, yeah, I mean, we got to move on. It's a great thing about college football is you get another chance every week. So we got to get opponent ahead of us. We're going to uh, work just as hard and prepare just as hard as we did against South Dakota State for Stetson this week and, and come out and, uh, you know, execute and let's get a win on Saturday. So. Um, that, that pump block uh, that, that Julius had, I think you were in on as well. I, guess yeah. I, I wonder if you take us through that and just kind of how big of a how big of a play that was. Yeah, it was a big play. It was, you know, they were backed up fourth quarter. Um, I think we were down three at that point. Um, and we had called that block in, earlier in the game, and it opened up. We were a little late on it, but that time, I mean, it was all out and everything. Julius made a great play. I dove in there. It was just kind of a collision at the punter. I, I didn't know what happened. Uh, turned around, I saw the ball, and Tay jumped on it. So yeah, it was, it was a pretty cool feeling.